plasma waves in astrophysical environments. Section 1, What is Space Plasma? By UCL Plasma Astrophysics Team The universe is made of up of space plasma, the fourth state of matter. The universe is made of up of space plasma. Plasma is the word given to the fourth state of matter, solid, liquid, gas, plasma. A plasma is a gas that is so hot that some or all its constituent atoms are split up into electrons and ions, which can move independently of each other. Because they are made up of electrically charged particles, plasmas can be strongly influenced by electrostatic and electromagnetic fields and forces, which can lead to very complex and interesting behavior. Plasmas are found throughout the solar system and beyond, in the solar corona and solar wind, in the magnetospheres of the Earth and other planets, in tails of comets, in the interstellar and intergalactic media and in the accretion disks around black holes. There are also plasmas here on Earth, ranging from the inside of a nuclear fusion reactor to a candle flame. In the Space Plasma Physics Group, we study plasmas in the Earth's magnetosphere and the solar wind, and what happens when they interact. The Magnetosphere the Earth has a magnetic field that is generated by electric currents flowing in its liquid outer core. It can be detected using a simple magnetic compass, from the UK a compass points north if you hold it horizontally and into the ground if you hold it vertically. If you were to do this experiment at lots of points on the Earth's surface you'd find out that the Earth's magnetic field look like that of a bar magnet, a magnetic dipole. The Earth's magnetic field extends far into space where it meets the interplanetary magnetic field, which is carried throughout the solar system by the solar wind, a gusty stream of plasma that flows through the solar system at typical speeds of 450 km per second. The solar wind is diverted around the Earth's magnetic field, which compresses the Earth's magnetic field on the side facing the sun and stretches into a long tail on the side pointing away from the sunday. The region of space containing the Earth's magnetic field is called the magnetosphere. Plasma in the Magnetosphere Despite what a lot of people think, space isn't actually empty, and the Earth's magnetosphere is no exception. The magnetosphere is full of plasma of many different temperatures and densities, though most of it is too tenuous to see with the naked eye or even with a telescope. The air at sea level has a 100,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,
regions of space filled with highly energetic protons and electrons that are harmful to astronauts and can damage spacecraft. The radiation belts are much more dangerous in the hours and days after the magnetosphere has been hit by a coronal mass ejection or exposed to particularly strong solar wind. The orbit of the GPS constellation and geosynchronous orbit, the location of the vast majority of communications satellites, are both within the outer radiation belt which makes them vulnerable during some space weather events. Space weather, effects on the ground. Space weather and the dynamics in the magnetosphere can also affect the surface of the Earth and our atmosphere. During space weather events there is a higher than usual flux of charged particles impacting the upper atmosphere. This can subtly change the conditions in the ionosphere and interfere with radio and satellite communications. These increased particle fluxes are strongest at the poles so can also result in diversion of transpolar flights. Space weather events can also interfere with power grids. The interaction between the solar wind and the Earth's magnetosphere can make the Earth's magnetic field oscillate. Oscillating magnetic fields can generate electric currents, which in the case of Earth's magnetic field can then flow in power grids. If this happens without warning, the extra current can sometimes overload the grids as happened in Quebec in 1989. It is only by properly understanding the magnetosphere and how it interacts with the solar wind that we can accurately predict and mitigate the effects of space weather on our society. Section 2, Plasma Waves Around Our Planet Image Credit, NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center slash Brian Monroe There is no sound in space, at least not the kind of sound we as humans can detect. There is, however, something akin to sound if you have the right tools to listen to it. NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center does, in the form of the Van Allen probes. This pair of robotic spacecraft have been in orbit of Earth for almost five years, sending back data on the electromagnetic and radiological conditions in space. The agency has released a number of audio recordings generated by plasma wave data from the probes. The sounds are both eerie and fascinating. While space is largely devoid of matter, hence why it's called space, there are particles zipping around. That's especially true near a planet with a magnetic field like Earth. One of the most common and varied types of plasma wave around Earth is known as the Whistler mode wave. These waves travel through the plasma around Earth, and are recorded by the probes using an instrument called emphasis, short for Electric and Magnetic Field Instrument Suite and Integrated Science. By shifting the frequency down, we can hear it as sound. Whistler mode waves closer to Earth, which you can hear in the clip above, are a product of electrical activity in the atmosphere. When lightning strikes, it triggers Whistler mode waves. Some of those electron waves escape beyond the atmosphere and bounce around in Earth's magnetic field specifically in the plasmasphere, which is a dense envelope of cold plasma. Lightning produces a wide range of frequencies but the higher frequencies travel faster. This is what gives Whistler mode waves their distinctive whistling quality. Beyond the plasma sphere, Whistler mode waves have a higher chirping sound. Scientists refer to these types of waves as a chorus, and they aren't connected to lightning strikes on Earth. Instead, chorus Whistler mode waves are created when electrons are pushed toward the night side of Earth. When the lower energy electrons from the wave hit Earth's plasma envelope, they produce sharp signals interpreted as a rising tone. The last example from the Van Allen probes is what's known as a plasmaspheric hiss. These are Whistler mode waves that travel inside the plasmasphere and sound like breathing radio static. Scientists aren't entirely certain what causes them. It may be related to lightning strikes like the Whistler waves. Others suspect a leaking of chorus waves. The Van Allen probes aren't just out there to record electromagnetic music. These spacecraft are gathering important data on how waves and particles interact. This could be vital in predicting space weather and improving telecommunications. Section 3, Plasma Waves Are Cooking Electrons in Earth's Magnetic Shield By Rafi Lutzter February 14, 2019 at Science Live a colorful illustration shows the spacecraft of the magnetospheric multi-scale mission passing through the plasma of space. Image, Copyright NASA Space is warm or, at least, warmer than it should be. 
All across the universe, including in our own solar system, astronomers have found that the nearly empty places between the stars and galaxies and other matter contain more heat than existing knowledge can fully explain. So what's cooking the void? A new study conducted in space might offer an answer, plasma waves banging into electrons. The 18 biggest unsolved mysteries in physics. Those nearly empty places in our solar system do have some stuff in them. There's solar wind, which consists of thin streams of charged particles, like electrons, moving at super high velocities away from the sun. And there's loose plasma, a form of matter that's widely distributed throughout the universe and that often exists in a chaotic, turbulent state. Scientists observed those electrons in the solar wind absorbing the energy of electromagnetic waves passing through the turbulent plasmas of Earth's magnetosheath. Once the energy was absorbed, it turned into heat. The magnetosheath is the region where Earth's electromagnetic fields most directly meet the solar wind. It was an effect researchers had observed before in less complex situations on Earth, but never in the chaotic turbulence of Earth orbit. Researchers found the effect in data from the Magnetospheric Multiscale Mission. That project includes four robotic spacecraft orbiting the Earth and measuring how our planet's electromagnetic field interacts with the Sun. In data from that extreme environment, researchers were able to tease out how energy in electromagnetic waves passing through the plasma turned into heat in the electrons. It was an effect never before seen in this sort of chaotic, natural setting. For the effect to work, the electrons and waves had to be moving at similar speeds. The electric field associated with waves moving through the plasma can accelerate electrons moving with just the right speed along with the wave, analogous to a surfer catching a wave, CO researcher Greg House, of the University of Iowa, said in a statement. Adding energy to the electrons causes them to heat up. The researchers said that their results, published today, February 14, in the journal Nature Communications, could help explain the universe's oddly high temperature. And their methods, they said, point the way forward to more detailed studies of how energy moves through plasmas in space. Section 4, The Giant Space Plasma Waves That Can Destroy Our Satellites Posted on November 25, 2019 by Dana Allen By, Sarah Bentley Everyday life is becoming more and more dependent on satellite services. From critical communications to forecasting and GPS, we would feel the impact of these lost services quickly. The location and accurate time provided by GPS is vital for navigation, the power grid, computers, phones, financial transactions, even the food we eat in the UK relies on timely transport. The BBC recently published an article on the impact of GPS which you can read here. However, satellites are susceptible to several types of damage through space weather. The region of space near Earth that is dominated by our planet's magnetic field is known as the magnetosphere. This provides us and our satellites significant protection from the fast-moving and highly charged solar wind streaming out from the Sunday. However, this barrier is highly dynamic as the solar wind constantly buffets us on its way through the solar system. This buffeting causes giant large-scale waves that can bounce around inside the magnetosphere, energizing and transporting trapped electrons and posing a hazard to satellites that reside in the radiation belt region. The radiation belts are donut-shaped regions that contain many charged particles, trapped by the magnetic field and continually traveling around the Earth. The Van Allen probe spent seven years observing the radiation belts, the region of energetic trapped particles that are hazardous to satellites actually, there are multiple ways in which space weather can threaten satellite services. High energy particles such as killer electrons can penetrate and ionize individual components. Electrostatic charging and the sudden discharges can develop on internal or external surfaces, and communications through the ionosphere can be severely disrupted. However, only some of these are directly related to the giant plasma waves I study ultra-low frequency or ULF waves. These waves affect the energization and transport of high-energy electrons. Since satellite operators don't like to advertise when they have spacecraft failures or the details of those failures, it's difficult to pinpoint many occasions where these waves were the dominant factor. 
One well-known example is the failure of the two Telesat spacecraft in 1994, Anaki-1 and E2-LAM-ETL, 2012. We're aware of this because of the sheer amount of disruption caused, these satellites carried virtually all Canadian television and a significant amount of communications capability. Energetic electrons accelerated by ULF waves damaged the satellites such that it took over six months to regain full services and a hundred thousand customers had to manually reorient their satellite dishes towards the recovered spacecraft. Figure 2, perturbations at the magnetopause can drive waves that propagate inwards, disturbing Earth's magnetic field. These ULF waves can reflect, bounce, or form standing waves that can be measured at the ground. Credit. Sarah Bentley. Technically, we classify ultra low frequency to be below 30 Hz, but I'm mostly interested in the 2 to 10 MHz range of waves. ULF waves are plasma waves, which means that as well as involving density compressions like a sound, or fluid, wave, they can also incorporate oscillations in the electric and magnetic field. All these oscillations are so large that we measure their period in minutes or hours and their wavelengths in thousands of kilometers comparable to the radius of the Earth. These waves have their strongest effects when we see sustained wave activity. In this case, repeated electric field pulses can coincide with the motion of the multitude of electrons zipping around the Earth. The electric field exerts a force on the trapped electrons, accelerating them or moving them to different areas of the magnetosphere. So, predicting the occurrence, amplitude, and extent of these, is an important aspect of forecasting the radiation belt environment. This would enable satellite operators to take steps to protect their spacecraft, for example by moving the satellite or shutting down vulnerable components. Unfortunately, predicting the extent of these waves isn't always that easy. Because they are so big, it's more computationally feasible to simulate them numerically than other aspects of the magnetosphere. But it's still very time-consuming, and we can't run simulations that correspond to a given time in real life because we would need to know what the boundary of the magnetosphere looks like and what the driving solar wind is doing. Typically, we only have a single point measurement in the solar wind near the Earth, which is just not enough to fully describe an environment hundreds of thousands of kilometers wide. An easier approximation we have been making is to simply use an empirical, statistical model which gives median ULF wave power under different solar wind conditions Bentley ETL, 2019. To our surprise, just using solar wind properties predicted the ULF wave power better than if we assume that we would see the same power from one hour to the next our model was much more successful than anticipated. We found that the amount of energy seen in these waves changes with different solar wind properties to those we expected. This suggests that the driving of these waves is slightly more complicated than previously realized and that the processing of the magnetosphere may be more important. Eventually, we expect that a model like this will improve radiation belt forecasting. This is becoming more important than ever while the last decade or so has been particularly quiet for the radiation belts there's no guarantee this will last. In this time, we have become ever more dependent on satellites, and the way that we use them has made them more susceptible to radiation damage. Spacecraft now often use off-the-shelf rather than custom radiation hard components, and cheaper methods of getting into orbit means that they spend even longer in the radiation belts. So, we hope to understand and predict these giant waves better and discover more about the complex and weird behavior in the area dominated by the Earth's magnetic field. References Bentley, S. N., Watt, C. E. J., Ray, I. J., Owens, M. J., Murphy, K., Lockwood, M., and Sandu, J. K., 2019. Capturing Uncertainty in Magnetospheric Ultra-Low Frequency Wave Models Space Weather, 17, 599-618 HTTPS slash slash doi.org slash 10.1029 slash 2018 SW002102 Lamb, H. L., Bottler, D. H., Bolton, B. and Evans, J. 2012, Anaki 1 and E2 Satellite Failures of January 1994 Revisited, Space Weather, 10, S10003, 
DOI 10.1029-2012-SW000811 Horn, R.B., Glowert, S.A., Meredith, N.P., Koskinen, H., Vanio, R., Afanasiv, A., Ganyashkina, N.Y., Amariudii, O.A., Bosher, D., Sicard, A., Majet, V., Pod, S., Jacobs, C., Sanahuja, B., Aaron, A., Hinderix D., and Pitchford, D., 2013, Forecasting the Earth's Radiation Belts and Modeling Solar Energetic Particle Events, Recent Results from Spacecast, J. Space Weather Space Klim, 3, 2013, A20, DOI. 10.1051-SWSC-2013042 Section 5, Plasma Waves Studies by Center for Space Physics, University of Newcastle Space, from the upper ionosphere out into the solar system contains a fully ionist gas, called plasma. Most of the ions are hydrogen with a smattering of helium plus electrons to give an overall, neutral plasma. Around the magnetized planets, Mercury, Earth, Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, and Uranus, magnetized plasma waves are generated and propagate in the magnetospheres. There are three possible wave modes for frequencies much less than the ion cyclotron frequency. These are the slow, fast and shear alvein modes. For low energy, 10 EV or so, plasmas, only the fast and shear alvein modes exist. The fast mode can propagate energy oblique to the ambient magnetic field, spreading wave energy throughout the magnetosphere. It is a type of magnetic pressure wave, compressional wave, dot the shear mode has energy guided along the ambient magnetic field. It is a transverse wave. Detecting ULF 